marks the most highly anticipated race of the 2020 schedule at the Toledo Speedway with the 32nd running of the Glass City 200. Welcome out to Toledo Speedway. Tim Clagg alongside CJ Perry. And just a few short weeks ago, it looked very uncertain, highly unlikely that this race was even going to be put on. But the Toledo Speedway staff allowing fans in the stands for the first time this season, putting together a three race schedule for the 32nd Glass City 200. Yeah, it was just at the end of August, Tim, that they got the clears to do this race with fans with the last three races, well, the first three races of the season with fans. So great to see that we can get back here and at least get the Glass City 200 in. So far today, Steve Needles been the fastest driver, the driver to keep an eye on. He was quickest in both practices, qualified third fastest. This is the one race that has eluded his mantle for years. He's been close, including last year. Steve Needles has won everything on the planet. And for the last six or seven years, he's been one of the guys to beat. Last year came really close in 2012, four laps away from getting the Glass City 200 old, under the old format. Heartbreak, though, for Steve Needles every time out. He is this the year he gets the Glass City. Normally, it takes drivers a few years to get up to speed at the Toledo Speedway. Caden Lopsovich, he's the exception. In just his second appearance at the Toledo Speedway, he took home the trophy in last year's running of the Glass City 200. And he had quick time right. earlier today. If he wins, he'll join a rare club here at Toledo Speedway. Since they changed the format in 2017, can Lopsovich win in both divisions? That would be an awesome feat for the young driver. And, and he is he's a guy to look out for, Tim. I mean, Caden Lopsovich is the real deal. The CRA Super Series has a youth movement. Three drivers under the age of 18 driving for some high-profile teams. Carson Hosovar, Jake Garcia, and Sammy Smith. They're all under 17 years of age. Do you see a veteran that can maybe spoil the youth movement here today? You know, I think for the Glass E200, certainly Harold Fair Jr., who's won this race, but I mean, that was 10 years ago under the old format. Michael Simcoe, who's having a career resurgence. Can he be one of the veterans to hold court, or will the youth movement be served again? Harold Fair Jr. won the very first race at the Toledo Speedway with the CRA Super Series 20 years ago. He's going to try and spoil the party here today. The 32nd running of the Glass City 200. It's coming up next right here on BCSN. Hunter Jack has a lot of experience. Being as young as he is, made a Glass City start in 2016. Third generation racer. His dad, Brent Jack, uh, so much experience. Over 20 years behind the wheel in his racing career. We haven't talked yet. Hayden Lopsovich, one of two double duty drivers looking to do a clean sweep here. He's going to have his hands full with Carson Hosovar. Hosovar starting to reel in our second place runner, the 16 machine of Caden Lopsovich. Yeah, Hunter Jack may be running easy right now, but don't look now. That second and third battle may be tightening up in just a little bit. And we have another lap machine. We have two lap machines in the near distance. I mean, look how how uh, quickly Hosovar has tracked down Lopsovich. And he's able to get his car deeper into the corner. No contest. Hosovar takes the position very quickly, has his sight set now on our race leader, Hunter Jack, at lap number 30. Two laps, he's managed to cut that deficit in half. What a year, though, Carson Hosovar is having. Biggest win of his career coming earlier this summer at the Red Bud 400 at the Anderson Speedway in Anderson, Indiana. And I was more impressed with his drive back through the field earlier this summer at the I-44 Speedway. Had a right front tire go down with 17 laps to go. They're able to put a new one on. He stormed through the field, made a last lap pass on Steven Nassing. Able to get that car to rotate on exit of turn four. It allowed him to draw side by side with leader Hunter Jack. Hosovar inching forward. And he now clears on exit. Hunter Jack, new leader, Carson Hosovar, lap 40. Here you see a good battle. Caden Lopsovich in the 16 blue machine and the 51 machine of Sammy Smith. That is your third and fourth place runners. Lopsovich was quick very early on in the opening lap, moving from fifth to second, but he's appeared to slow down quite a bit. And I think the strategy for the first half of the race is we see a little bit of contact for Sammy Smith was to just take it easy. And now they're giving him the green light. There he goes as he moves his way to the third spot for the young 15-year-old driver. The 18 machine up front early on. New leader from the outside line, Brandon Short. First time racing here. And that is a very quick car, very familiar car that we've seen here a lot at the Toledo Speedway. Steve Needles has been behind, won a lot of races, especially that season where he won six races. But Brandon Short, he's won three races this season at Midvale Speedway. Dennis Strickland, hungry.
to get back up front, to be running up front and possibly leading laps in the Glass City 200. I mean, that would be a story in itself. He won in 2013. Even then, people considered him a long shot to win. Seven years later, in, he semi-retired. He really doesn't race full-time anymore. So to see Dennis Strickland this close to the lead, uh, yeah, this, this could give you chills. Lap cars going to decide the battle. Dennis Strickland around the high side of the track. New leader, Dennis Strickland, the 2013 winner. Sailing on that outside line, passing two lap machines of Thiel and Riedersdorf at lap number 19. He will give way this time, and Frank Giovanni, the Flat Rock track champion last year. CJ, he had to miss the banquet last year. You know why? Because he was getting married, and he <laughs> could not be in two places at once, and a smart decision, happy wife, happy life. And I think the 18 machine of Brandon Short going the wrong way now as we approach halfway. Short in second, Frank Giovanni now wants it. The 30 machine of Bergacker is directly behind this battle for the second position. Yeah, and your question is, oh, we got some smoke coming out of the 18 machine here. So we may and that's again directly in front of the leader as well for Dennis Strickland. <laughs> wow, and Strickland just avoiding that. I thought we were going to have our first caution of the evening, but I think the 18 is going to pull off just in time. Well, Austin Fredwell pulling down to the apron. Tough break for him, making his first start at the Toledo Speedway in the Glass City 200. Guy Fire, look at the move by Frank Giovanni. <laughs> Was on the inside line, made the right hand turn up to the outside line to get around Brandon Short for the runner up spot. Frank Giovanni on the move. Oh, looking just so good in traffic. Oh, Short goes around. That's your fourth place runner spinning around out of the exit of turn number four. And we are under the yellow flag now at lap 42. Your fourth place runner. Going for a spin on the exit of turn number four, resting now against the outside wall. Exiting turn four, back to green flag racing. A strong restart for Dennis Strickland. And we may have a change at second place here. Frank Giovanni has it on the outside line. Brian Bergacker looking to take control of second, and he does move Brian Bergacker into the runner-up position. Yep. Dennis Strickland, Brian Bergacker, the battle for the lead up front ensuing on this restart. Bergacker getting his nose out in front. Strickland fighting on the inside line, has to give way on the exit of turn number four. New leader at the strike, Brian Bergacker. Great restart by Brian Bergacker, just out muscling Dennis Strickland to the outside. Steve Needle's been oh so close. You go back 2012, laps away. Last year, leading under the red flag at lap 87. Couldn't refire, had a mechanical issue, and had to watch everybody else and Caden Lopsovich celebrate in victory lane. Yeah, I think this race would mean more to anybody than, or would not mean more to anybody except for Steve Needle's seeing as how he has been so close and has raced for so many years, it kind of becomes that personal quest. A lot of guys look at the Glass City as, as the crown jewel. I think Needles, it would mean just a little bit extra. And now he's starting to close that gap on Brian Bergett. Uh, hungry Steve Needles, that race in 2012, let go. The engine did with three laps to go. It's not over until you cross the start finish line and see that checkered flag waving. Top two though, CJ starting to really distance themselves away from the rest of the field. Yeah. If you're Steve Needles, you can't wait. You have to try and get by Brian Bergacre as soon as you can on this restart. This is absolutely crucial here. It's late enough in the race that you gotta go and you have to get past Bergacre because Bergacre is so strong. Needles needs to catch him at least a little bit asleep at the switch. This is gonna be this is gonna be a huge restart. Bergacre on the inside, Steve Needles on the outside, back to green flag racing in the 32nd Glass City 200. They are even in the middle of turn two. They exit still even dead heat down the back stretch. Stevie Needles powering to the race lead from the outside line sideways, but he takes the lead on lap 73. Needles led 136 laps in 2012 before the engine let go with three to go. Last year he led until 13 laps remaining when he had a mechanical issue. No problems, fist out the window, hand in the air. First career Glass City 200 win for Steve Needles. He finally 
gets the trophy that saluted him and that has been missing from his mantle.